Hi, everybody, and welcome to yet another exciting and fascinating Under the Hood session around CloudGuard Network Security. Um, we are going to take a break for another 10 seconds, 15 seconds, and let a few other people join. Um, and we'll be back with you very, very shortly. And thank you for your patience. So 10 seconds are up. Welcome back to Under the Hood for Cloud Guard Network Security, which is our technical session, but not too deep and not too heavy and not too long. This one is around zero trust with threat prevention for Azure Virtual WAN. This is the second episode of a two episode series on uh, zero trust for Azure Virtual WAN, the previous one, which was two weeks ago by the same Technical marketing engineer extraordinaire, Jeff Engel, who's on the call again, was around zero trust with access control for Azure Virtual WAN, which basically means that we're using, you know, looking at it from a different perspective and using different uh, security technologies, or as they call them in uh, Checkpoint, as we call them in Checkpoint Blades. So um, I'm going to introduce you to our, uh, our experts. Expert number one is Jeff Engel, uh, my right-hand man, uh, my, uh, the brains. Um, actually, John is also the brains, but we'll get there. Uh, technical marketing engineer for the cloud security um, business unit of Checkpoint. I, of course, have Jonathan Moreski, product marketing manager for cloud security. And we also have John Guo, who's our Cloud Alliance architect working with Microsoft. Hi, John. Hey, so, um, hey, Jeff. So, Jeff, why don't you take it away? And um, um, I'll be happy to help. By the way, uh, just before I forget, there are attachments that are interesting and valuable that we've added so that you can check it out during the presentation, during the webinar. We also have some polls. I think we actually have even have four polls this time. Some of them uh, will be very interesting. In fact, uh, I believe that all of them are interesting, but you'll have to choose that or decide that for yourselves. Um, and please don't forget to send your questions and answers. It should be at the bottom of your screen for Jeff and for John. Um, and, uh, and if you have any easy ones, then perhaps I'll be able to answer, the, answer those as well. I'm going to hand you over to Jeff. Jeff, take it away. Thanks, Jonathan. Yep. So today we're going to cover threat prevention um, aspect to zero trust for Azure Virtual WAN. It's going to be some review for some of you that are, are familiar with Checkpoint, deeply familiar with Checkpoint. If you're not, this will be a good session. Um, it's going to go over a, a few different things that cover threat prevention in regards to both the the enforcement of various things, but also what happens after the fact, like looking at logs and, and reviewing and doing investigations and whatnot. So this is a quick agenda. And like, and like Jonathan mentioned before, this is a, a pretty lightweight, um, not, not a super heavy and deep thing. Um, and also just a reminder that in the attachments and in general, we've done um, a number of sessions around virtual WAN. So we've done one on onboarding. There's some videos on onboarding around the configuration of the virtual WAN running intent feature and, and some, some traffic patterns and whatnot. We did one on remote access VPN as well. And then with the one we mentioned just a, a second ago regarding access control, and then today obviously around threat prevention. So here's the agenda. We're gonna talk about the partnership real quick, overview and prerequisites, review the, the same reference architecture we've been going over through all the sessions we've done, a, about a 17 minute demo that I just did in my lab, some limitations and considerations, some uh, reminders of uh, what's out there available to you to, for resources and information, and then Q&A at the end, obviously, but also feel free to um, ask questions at any point. We, we can even stop the video if need be and jump to a live, a live screen if, if we want to. So pretty much uh, no uh, wrong, uh, we, we, there's no really restrictions on what we do here. So feel free to jump in and ask questions. So Jonathan, I'm going to pass it over to you real quick on the, the Microsoft partnership. Thanks. Let's breeze through this. Um, as you can see on the right hand side, uh, Checkpoint is a highly accoladed partner of Microsoft. Um, we are a founding member of the Microsoft Intelligence Security Association, um, MISA, which uh, connects us to a whole bunch of different uh, Microsoft security technologies where we have uh, a whole bunch of integrations, including with Azure Virtual WAN, with uh, 
with, with, uh, and with other Microsoft uh, security services. We are a leading worldwide security partner. In fact, I think that we have been Microsoft's number one worldwide uh, ISV partner in the last few Microsoft financial years. In fact, we are now in FY24 for those who are not familiar with Microsoft nomenclature. Uh, we have a whole bunch of award-winning Azure Marketplace offerings. Um, and some of the awards are there on the right-hand side. I think most of the awards are for Cloud Guard Network Security, which generates a, you know, a fair amount of business for Microsoft and for us. And in fact, we're talking about Microsoft Virtual One at the moment, and uh, that's also available on Azure Marketplace. Uh, I mentioned before about uh, the fact that we were one of the founding members of MISA. Um, we are a premier Azure Marketplace vendor, and we're also Mac eligible. Mac is Microsoft Azure Consumption Commitment, I think it's called, which basically means that if you have uh, an enterprise agreement with Microsoft, uh, then you have some sort of commitment of spend uh, during the year. Um, and then you can actually spend some of that commitment on Cloud Guard, Cloud Guard Network Security, and some of the other Cloud Guard capabilities, and that counts towards your annual uh, Microsoft spend. So you can look into that with your Microsoft account manager or even with your Checkpoint account manager. We can help you out with that. And we have a very tight uh, R&D relationship, uh, business relationship, partnership, and integrations between our Cloud Guard capabilities, as well as other Checkpoint products, um, specifically with Cloud Guard Network Security connected to Azure Sentinel, to Azure Gateway Load Balancer, and more importantly, most importantly for this call, Azure um, Virtual One. So I'm gonna throw that back to you, Jeff. All right. Thanks, John. Really appreciate the polls. that. The polls. Go ahead, whenever John. You're, whenever you're ready. I'm. I'm. You know, I have a bunch of them. So um, let we me. Can, yeah, we can start with one now if you want. Okay, good. So here's. Let's start with the easy ones and go into the more complicated ones. So you can choose spell to see them, and please, as I'm reading them through, please feel free to to answer so we can see what you what where you are. This is you know an easy one. What is your current cloud status? Number one, I have no cloud. Card. No, no clouds. Number two, uh, I have a single public cloud. Number three, I have multiple public clouds. Number four, I have public and private clouds, which uh, is generally called a hybrid cloud. And number five, I have private cloud or clouds only. Um, and uh, Bright Talk, which is the platform we're using, only allows five answers to these questions or a maximum of five answers. Otherwise, I'd add a whole bunch of questions around what are your plans for the next year or two years or what have you. So uh, we'd be very happy to get your feedback, um, what your current cloud status is. I'm gonna leave this poll open for another uh, uh, 15, 20 seconds. I can see that people have already started to vote. Uh, at the moment, it's neck and neck between public clouds, single public clouds and multiple public clouds. So that sounds interesting. Uh, and actually now, um, I'm sorry to, <laughs> to do a running commentary like I'm in a sports um, event, but uh, we're not, 28% with no clouds at all. So that's also interesting. So I'm going to hand you back to Jeff. And in the meantime, you can continue voting if you like, and we'll have more polls uh, later. Jeff, don't forget to remind me to, to put the next polls up. I will try. <laughs> I'm not sure when we want to insert. We'll, we'll do our best to insert as we go here. Um, so, hey, Calvin, I see your, your question in the in the, the Q&A. Q I just sent that to somebody at support. So hopefully... It's not showing for everyone, but if you want to just to ask another question, is that covering the entire screen or is it just a small box somewhere that's blocking the view? I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll, I'll keep going in, in the meantime. Hopefully it's not uh, going to impact the entire thing, but I'll, I'll look into that in the, in the background. All right. Thank you, Jonathan. Appreciate it. All right. So overview and prerequisites this is pretty standard stuff. If you've been on these sessions with us before, um, this one's obviously a little bit different because we're focusing on the threat prevention side. So in general, what are we talking about? What's the big deal? So really it boils it down to combining the simplicity of Azure Virtual WAN networking with the simplicity of checkpoint security being applied on top of it with Cloud Guard Network Security, and then you know focused on today with the threat prevention side of things. The last session, we talked about access control. And so access control, in regards to you know zero trust and whatnot is where you are as an organization defining your policy as you see fit so each organization is going to have their own um 
HR policies, um, requirements, et cetera, like um, restrictions, if you will. And, and Checkpoint can't really tell you what to put in there. That's really on, on you. We can give you suggestions and best practices based on what we see. But at the end of the day, you, the customer, are in charge of building that policy. In regards to third prevention, it's a little bit different. Third prevention is where you are trusting Checkpoint to provide you the security, the, the signatures, the, the, the engines, the AI, the machine learning capabilities, all the good stuff, the sandboxing capabilities on your behalf to protect you for things that you you can't block. You know, you, there's, th there's things that are going to be open because you have to do business. And that's how things get exploited is through open, open, you know, ports and whatnot. And so you have to trust that, you know, you have providers that can provide uh, protection on top of that. And so, like I said in the beginning, this may be somewhat rev a review for some of you. But if not, this is a you know, good, just a general overview of, of just a you know, tip of the iceberg, honestly, of the capabilities that you would have at your disposal when applying Cloud Guard Network Security into your Azure Virtual End configuration. So IPS is the first one. It's kind of a the standard um, protection mechanism. It's going to be your, you know, you're protecting against known threats that are signature based, but it's constantly updated. So we are... Um, well known for our coverage for of CVEs, and we'll, it will, you'll see that in the in the in the demo, where you'll see the the, the breadth and depth of what's um, available to you. So every Patch Tuesday, for example, we're coming out with protections to, you know, essentially virtually patch your systems. You know, in the time between when you have, you know, when the announcements are made, and when you have time to actually patch your systems, the IPS can can protect those systems from being compromised. Um, Antivirus is looking at files that are known to be bad. They're going to be signature based as well. You know, we're, we're not or hash based where we've done our investigation of those files and they're known to be bad. Antibot is, is similar in a way where it's blocking, you know, outbound communications to command and control. That one's going to be a little bit more dynamic because we do have, and as, as mentioned in the last bullet there, the DNS security, we do have some domain generation algorithms where we can automatically create block lists. Um, on your behalf that's, that's more dynamic and not just reactive and, and reactive to known bot networks and, and block those. Sandblast threat emulation is our, what we call, you know, that's a, the, the marketing name for our sandbox solution, which we also feel very strongly in. It's going to, you know, look at, and if we see files coming in that are unknown, it's going to run them through our sandbox and um, give you a decision whether it's good or bad. John, do you have anything to add to that? that laundry list of uh, capabilities. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say the same blast. Uh, I would say the same blast and the DNS security bit is the one that really resonates with me uh, with the, you know, for a for an organiz organization to be compromised, all it takes is one file, right? Um, for the attacker to send a file and compromise a machine in your environment. And usually those files that, you know, something that we haven't seen before. Um, and as, as specifics, and, and it, these files are specifically crafted to penetrate your environment. So uh, the sandbox threat emulation piece, our sandboxing solution will help you detect um, that this file contains malicious payload and will stop at a perimeter, right? And that is an important bit because once the, once that, once you're, once a, a, a PC or a, 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 a server or something in your, in your environment has been compromised, right? The, the command and control is start controlling and start spreading across, uh, so start to attack, you know, uh, spread laterally and attack laterally against you know other workloads that are in the same segment of network. So the threat emulation piece is uh, something that really resonate and really with me personally and also a lot of our customers as well that will stop the attack at the perimeter. Um, DNS security this is something that's brand new, right? And um, we're able to have the ability to um, detect the, um, the the DNS tunneling, right? Um, and also uh, looking at other uh, like like Jeff said before a DNS. Um, the uh, domain uh, generation algorithm to detect that, uh, hey, this domain is malicious. Uh, it's something that's brand new. So we're able to have that capability. Um, so yeah, those couple of things I want to add. Chef. Great. Thanks, John. Yep. Uh, real quick, back to that Q&A about the black box. Kelvin, um, the, the support person I'm talking to on the side here said, if you just refresh your browser, he thinks that should go away. Um, I think it's working okay for everybody else. But I'm not, I can't, there's no way for me to verify, but 
that's what I'm being told. So hopefully that works for you, Calvin. All right. So we'll go to the next slide. Some just uh, prerequisites and recommendations. So in general, it, it does help be uh, somewhat helpful to know, you know, virtual win in general and, and more importantly, the, the integration it is not required, obviously. Once you see this demo video, it's it's pretty straightforward. But if you do want to see those previous videos, feel free to visit our YouTube page or even check the attachments attached to this Bright Talk session. Those are all linked in there as well. Um, it'll walk you through the entire process and get you up and running. And it's super simple. It's that's that's really the beauty of the whole thing, honestly, is this is the simplicity. So 8110 and above. And then please uh, feel free to reach out to any of us, your overlays, your partners, your local account teams and checkmates. Um, we'll talk about checkmates more later, but that's our user community for any ideas and assistance and uh, guidance. I think now would be a good, good time for the next poll, John, Jonathan. John, Jonathan, whatever you call. Okay, <laughs> yes, I'm just kidding. All right, so for the second poll, um, so here's a new one. So um, yes. So where are you in your Azure Virtual WAN journey? So answer number one, I'm just starting and doing research. Answer two, I'm actively testing it. Answer three, I'm already in production with Azure Virtual WAN with one hub. Answer four, I'm already in production with Azure Virtual WAN with more than one hub. Definitely an expert. And answer five, I'm not planning to use Azure Virtual WAN. So again, where are you in your Azure Virtual WAN journey? Well, we should be keeping our, uh, our poll open for another 30 seconds at least. At the moment, we're neck and neck, neck between, I'm already in production with Azure Virtual WAN with more than one hub. So uh, John and Jeff, be careful. We've got some experts in the room. Um, and so uh, I'm looking forward to seeing some, uh, some advanced questions. Um, and uh, let's, I'm going to leave this poll open for a little while. And the next question actually is going to be the poll next poll when Jeff is ready for it is, uh, what do you want to see for the next Under the Hood sessions? So wait for that. At the moment, we still have 44% uh, of the people that are just starting and doing research, but we still definitely have uh, some, uh, I think, let's just say, how I'm, I have to do a calculation. Um, Three in production with one hub and three in production with more than one hub. So it looks good. So I'm handing you back to Jeff. Great. Thanks, Jonathan. All right. So as in previous sessions, we go over the reference architecture really quick. <clears throat> um, I wish sometimes that it was more complex than this, but it's really this simple. Once you have your virtual LAN hub configured, we are just along for the ride as a, as a security provider, which is really awesome. And, and then allows us to just do our, our thing, which is security. Um, as we'll talk about in a second, and I'll point it out because we have it on the left-hand side in regards to ingress. So ingress at the moment is not supported at, um, through the hub. So you have to deploy a, a, you know, a dedicated VNet for egress or for, sorry, for ingress with a, you know, a distinct, Cloud Guard deployment, particularly the VMSS, for that inbound traffic. However, it is currently in early availability. So if you have, if you want to be a part of the early availability, um, please let us know. We'll put our email addresses in the, we'll put our email addresses back up at some point, so you can email us if you're interested in joining the EA program in regards to that. So that is on its way. So ingress through the hub is coming. So stay tuned. All right, so it is demo time. It is about a 17 minute demo. Um, like I mentioned before, it's gonna be some, you know, maybe kind of low level for those of you that are checkpoint experts, but for those of you that are not, are not I hopefully this will be extremely helpful. Maybe even for the ones that are, it will be a reminder refresher of, of what's possible. So we will be back in a second. All right, let's get started. So first things first, just uh, this is going to be partly review. Um, even the threat prevention piece may be review for some of you. But um, as we mentioned in the previous previous demo and webinar, we were focused on zero trust and, and in regards to the access control policy. 
in this session, we're going to be talking about zero trust threat prevention and, and the threat prevention policy within the checkpoint world. So, but to start off, just to lay the groundwork, we are working off of a base cloud guard net network security integration with virtual WAN, and that is already configured in my lab. This will be the, the same one that we used in the previous sessions. So we'll just walk through that again real quick. Take a look at the virtual WAN configuration. Just review that the virtual network connections are still up and running and live and connected. And there they are. I have the three different VNets. My prod, dev, and HR VNets connected into the hub. If I go over to the hub properties, You will see my NVA configuration, and those are already attached to my security management server. If this is all new to you, please go back and review the other videos that we've, we've done. They should be um, located in the, the description of the YouTube video once that's posted as well. If we back off, then go to the routing content and routing policies property configuration section. You will see that we have this configured already as well that we're sending our traffic to our NVA for both internet and private traffic. So all of our internal networks are also going through the, the Cloud Guard Network Security gateways. And so now that that's all set. So now that we have that validated, we can go over and take a look at the, the threat prevention policy itself. So as mentioned before, and actually I'll jump back real quick to where I just, where I just was. If you look inside of each individual gateway's properties, there's a couple of tabs or a few tabs here. Network security is related to the access control section that we talked about in the last session, where you enable firewall, app control, you're all filtering at any awareness, content awareness, etc. Threat prevention is much simpler if you want it to be. We've added the, the new capability called autonomous threat prevention, where we are enabling based on your feedback the proper security controls that you want to have in place. If you want to do a customized <clears throat> configuration and are licensed for it, you can still do that. Just do custom and select the right, the, the correct uh, or the, the features that you want. But in our case for today, we're going to show off autonomous third prevention. Since you are in, you know, in, in, in best practice, if, unless you know exactly what you're looking for and, and want full control, autonomous Third prevention provides you the, the security blanket that Checkpoint has got your best and, you know, is, is, the, is the expert. And we are helping manage and maintain your security posture from a third prevention standpoint. So just to review, if we go into security policies, access control, once again, is where you are defining a policy based on your organization's requirements and HR policies, et cetera, what's, what's acceptable to your environment. Checkpoint really can't tell you what to put in here. We can give you some guidance and some best practices or, or what we feel is correct, but each organization is gonna have their own ideas or own requirements for what that has to be. Um, and as, as you saw in that previous session, we gave you a, a quite a few different things to consider and, and what's possible. In the case of third prevention, it actually be, is, is a bit easier in that regard. So if we go over to the third prevention side, so on the left-hand side, you see access control, but then also threat prevention. If I go into autonomous policy under threat prevention, you will see that you are given some profile choices. And the current profile, as you, as you, as you would expect, is simply cloud data center. And having that profile selected enables these features because these are relevant so if I hit the drop down, you'll see some additional options for you if you so choose. So this is something that you can select um, depending on the, the configuration, you know, for other places. So in our case, we're, it's pretty straightforward. We're going to use Cloud Data Center, but you could use Perimeter, for example, if you wanted to, or if it's, a, if it's purely an isolated network in the cloud, you could do internal network and it would configure it appropriately. So that's the beauty. So you don't have to worry about all the the nuances and customizations required to get the best configuration. We, we do that for you, which is pretty slick. 
So once you have that set, now you're pretty much ready to go. And we'll try, and we'll use the, the the custom policy to kind of help me help guide or help show you what's what's in, included in all of this because we kind of uh, use different terminology when we talk about the technologies versus what we call them in the in the the customized or policy. So the the first one to start off with, which a lot of you are probably fully aware of, is IPS. And so checkpoints IPS is well known. Um, extremely uh, well proven in third party testing. We cover all the CVs you can imagine, I'm sure, and then some, even ones that are unpublished, you'll see um, the first thing you can do if you if, I, if you saw what I did there, I went to custom policy and I simply went down here on the left hand side to IPS protections. And this lists out every IP, IPS protection we have available to to apply to your environment. Some of the cool things that you can do inside of here and then things to, to see the descriptions and the protection names are very clear of what they're covering and the CVEs are very clear and the way the, the columns are updated are, are very straightforward. So you have an update date, release date. We have three different um, metrics or ways of categorizing the protections, which makes a big difference when you're trying to determine performance versus security or, or the combination of the two. And, and with the autonomous threat prevention configuration, we're doing that for you. We're, we're, we're helping you make that calculation automatically. Performance impact, severity, and confidence level. Pretty straightforward. You can also search by whatever you're looking for. So for example, WordPress is pretty popular. You just simply type in WordPress and you will see all of the WordPress protections available within the environment. On the right hand side, you'll see these filters that are built in that automatically update as soon as you make different choices. If you want to see um, different things, you can select them from the list. There's all the Cisco IOS and have some Apple iOS stuff in there too. So I have a, a bastion hose set up to connect into one of the Windows machines, or my Windows machine in one of my VNets to do a test to see if my configuration is correctly blocking it. It's obviously, it's, it's a test, so it's a, it's a simulation, but it's kind of a cool thing. You can feel free to try it in your own environments. It's just uh, cpcheckme.com is the website. give that a run it'll likely give me a capture of some sort and there's my capture all right so it's going to attempt a malware infection connection to command and control the zero day which we'll see if it actually shows up as a, as a zero day in the logs use of an anonymizer and then usually data leakage does fail. Um, either way, you can see that our configuration without a lot of massaging or any, any really configuration or customization is automatically blocking the things it should be doing, um, which is the way it's supposed to be. And it makes your life easier. So you're combining the ease of virtual WAN, networking and configuration with the ease of configuring your threat prevention policy with our autonomous policy configuration and you are up and running and protected almost immediately in your environments. So after that's run, we can take a look at our management server and then the logs. So we'll take a look at that. We should see an entry for pretty much every single one of these. So this first one here is that malware infection and actually IPS caught that one then the command and control blocked by antibot the zero day actually got gr grabbed by antivirus because it's uh, so we automatically generate new files for the zero day test and so in this case it's already been out there in the wild so it gets added to the database automatically and gets seen as a as a, as a known malicious file and so it's going to get caught by antivirus 
instead of going through 30 emulation again. And then the next one is the browser exploit being once again blocked by IPS. And then the anonymizer being blocked as well. I think that's this one here. Yeah, here's the anonymizer. This one's actually being grabbed by URL filtering. So a combination of different features and functions all in conjunction working together to protect your systems and environments from infection. Um, one thing I wanted to point out is the quality of the logs. And, and if you're from, you know, been a Checkpoint customer for a long time, this is nothing new for you. But for those of you that aren't as familiar, the, the, the proof's in the pudding, basically. If you open up one of these entries and compare them to other things that you have, other logs that you use in your in your in your day-to-day -day life, there's a reason why a lot of other people in IT come to the come to the checkpoint guys for logs to, to for for information and, and for troubleshooting because the log detail and quality and, and information and how it's laid out is is second to none in my opinion. And coming from personal experience as a former customer, I can uh, attest to that. One thing I also wanted to point out today, so the, the logs are great and everything um, in and of themselves, and you can do, they're, they're super powerful, and you know, I've actually done some already some pre-filtering on this particular log tab, um, and everything in here is right-clickable, so you can create filters, you can say remove all the antivirus items from this list, all, you know, to create, you know, reduce the noise. I'm going to remove all the HTTPS inspection logs from this list. And that happens automatically. Um, something that else that I, I hit by default is it automatically calculates top sources, destination services, actions, blades, etc. for you, which is pretty cool. And you can click on these and these automatically get added to your filter list and then another thing real quick and, and just i know we could we could spend honestly probably hours just in here navigating through different pieces but one technology that we don't talk about a lot and probably should do more of that's an optional add-on for management is something we call smart event and smart event is essentially uh, checkpoints built in sim it's not a replacement for your splunk for your q radar for whatever you use for a sim, if you use a sim. Um, but for all things checkpoint, if you use smart event out of the box, it provides a bunch of pre-built views and reports that you can use. And here's the, the out of the box list of views that you can grab. There's a preview on the right hand side. I'm gonna grab the threat prevention one, opens up a new tab. Uh, by default, it's going to give you these views. You can actually create your own views and customize them as you see fit. The defaults the last 24 hours. You can adjust that to whatever you want. Each of these are clickable, so you can dive in and get to the raw log if you want to. So, for example, I'll just jump into this one. Gets me one level lower. Double click again. It'll give me to the raw log. If I back out again real quick, some other the some other really slick views or built-in views, and I'll I've already had it preloaded, is a miter attack view. I'll refresh this to make sure it's up to date. And it categorizes all of the different threats that have come in based on the MITRE ATT&CK, the MITRE ATT&CK framework. Um, and so you can, once again, double click on those. You've got a timeline, you got your sources. Get to the raw log. And see what's going on. And this one actually gave us a packet capture that we can use. You can see the actual attack that was attempted to a certain extent. And 
all kinds of additional information. So a very, very powerful tool. Um, and I'll jump back one more step just to show you. Um, we'll go to back to this part and reports. So you also have similar fashion for reporting. And you can send those, you know, export those PDF, have those sent off via email on a regular basis if you want to. But they're very detailed in and of themselves. So something else to consider as you're building out uh, your environments and some other, another tool to use. So bottom line, you know, that's pretty much it for this demo. What we really wanted to, to illustrate is, you know, the combination of the ease of configuring your Azure environments with virtual WAN, but then also adding on top the simple deployment of Checkpoint Cloud Guard Network Security on top. And then not only that, but the configuration of that and the policies and the possibilities that you can do within that world and to protect your environments and very, very quickly and easy and easily. So hope this was helpful. Um, appreciate your time. Please, uh, let us know what you want to see in the future, and we will talk to you on the next one. Thank you. We're not going away yet. No, we're not. So real quick, I'm sure my mute is off. Um, in case you are watching this on the recording later on, so this is not for the people that aren't watching live, if the video quality is Poor, there is there should be a wheel or a properties thing to allow you to increase the resolution just like in YouTube so I've been, we've been told in the past if you are on low bandwidth or assume your things are on low bandwidth or maybe it doesn't by default the replays of the videos can be poor quality but if you increase they, they do give the ability to increase the, the resolution so if you're watching this on recording in the that previous video was you know not very easy to see please uh, Make sure to do that. Uh, Jonathan, probably now is an okay time to do the, the next poll. All right, let's take it away. Um, so the third poll is uh, an opportunity for you to provide us with your feedback and your requests. Um, so the question is, what new content should we prepare for the next Under the Hood sessions? And by the way, if you're not aware, uh, this is the 18th Under the Hood session that we've done, and we'll be doing them every two weeks uh, between uh, the different cloud guard capabilities. Um, and uh, so you have the opportunity to influence at least uh, partially. Uh, but in fact, if you provide us with your feedback, you can influence completely. So here are the answers about the content that we should prepare for the next Under the Hood sessions, or at least your the way that you can answer. Number one, more Azure Virtual One stuff. Please contact me and I'll tell you what I want. Number two, Cloud Guard Network Security for Azure, not for Virtual One. Uh, answer number three, Cloud Guard Network Security for AWS. Answer four, Cloud Guard Network Security for another public or private cloud. Please contact me and I will tell you what I want. Answer number five, Cloud Guard CSPM or AppSec or Workload or another Cloud Guard capability. There are actually a lot of Cloud Guard capabilities and I'll uh, tell you a little bit about, uh, well, I'm not going to tell you, but um, we're about to announce something new for Cloud Guard. Um, I can't give you too much detail, but look um, and watch for the next upcoming press release in the next week or so, or two weeks. Um, but uh, Cloud Guard includes, um, Cloud Guard is a, a cloud native application protection platform, includes uh, Cloud Guard network security, uh, cloud security posture management, Cloud Detection and Response, which we also call Cloud Intelligence and Threat Hunting. AppSec, which is a web application and API um, protection platform. Uh, workload security for containers and for serverless, as well as um, developer security for secret scanning. So I think that I've named all the different capabilities. So, um, I mean, we do have those as well. So we will contact you if you fill out uh, answer number five, and we'll check to see what you're but in the meantime, uh, we actually have no zero votes for more Azure Virtual WAN stuff. So if there's anybody in the room who needs more Azure Virtual WAN stuff, um, please tell us. Maybe a good indication that we've done, you know, really covered this a lot in the last couple of months.
but there's a lot of uh, requests for cloud and network security for Azure, not for virtual, for virtual one. There's uh, at least a third of the answers coming back, just less 30% is now for AWS. There is at least one request for another public or private cloud, and we'll contact you to find out what you want. And there are two requests for uh, non cloud guard network security, some other capability of, uh, of cloud guard. So I'm going to leave the poll open in the meantime and hand you back to our technical marketing engineer extraordinaire. And just before I do that, I'm going to remind you that please, uh, if you have any questions, please send them in uh, Jeff's direction or in John's direction. Um, and I promise to send you some swag if you manage to ask them a question that they can't answer. Uh, I mean, I'm talking about Azure Virtual and I'm not talking about what's the meaning of life or something like that. So uh, handing you back to Jeff. All right. Thanks, Jonathan. So we'll go into limitations. Apparently I'm on mute. Um, sorry, guys. So we're going to go real, real quick through limitations and considerations. So at the moment, um, there is no auto scaling. This is a kind of a repeat of what we've said in the previous sessions. Like once again, you need to choose your infrastructure units that launched to match the throughput you expect to see. If you need to go more, you need to redeploy a, a newer um, NVA or a new, a new managed application to get to that throughput level. Um, only one public IP per NVA at GA. And then as we mentioned before about ingress, um, this is just a complete repeat of what we said before. And then once again, another announcement, another call out. If you are interested in the early availability for ingress for virtual WAN, please let us know. Um, I'm going to display our email addresses again really quick. So hopefully you can see those right now. I'm not sure how those present on the audience side, but um, I'm guessing they're somewhere. So if you want to copy paste those somewhere, please do so. Additional information resources. So this is all of these links are in the attachments section of this Bright Talk session. So you don't need to take a picture or a screenshot or whatnot. You can just uh, go to that attachment section both now and after the session, you, can, you, sh you will still be able to access these links through the previous um, Bright Talk uh, session link. Those attachments are still listed there after we're done today. So the first one is simply the admin guide for the integration, the threat prevention admin guide itself. And you'll see all the stuff that I, that I didn't talk about. You know, there's a, there's a bunch of other things that we do in the threat prevention world that we didn't cover today for, you know, for time's sake and for, you know, depending on, you know, the, the current, uh, what we have available to us in there. Um, a link to the previous Bright Talk on access control. It's the uh, first part of the series. And then the, the next four, I think the next four links are the YouTube links to what we did before. So an onboarding video, the actual routing intent configuration, and then actually doing some traffic testing, both east-west and egress, remote access VPN, so highly scalable remote access VPN using Azure Virtual WAN combined with the, uh, the Azure... Um, I forgot the name of it, John Guo, the, the DNS balancer, sorry. Um, traffic manager, there we go. Uh, a shout out, a big shout out for our Checkmates forums. So if you are not familiar with Checkmates, please visit when you get a chance. It is a great resource for not only virtual WAN or any cloud guard, any any checkpoint thing. It's, it's all checkpoint products are out there and available. There's a lot of really, really smart folks, both from Checkpoint themselves, but also external that are just like you, trying to get through and, and, make, and make stuff work. Um, a link for the general Azure virtual end documentation, and then also a, uh, a link and a kind of a shout out for one of the Azure architects who have been helping us with the integration all along. She has a good, uh, a great, a great GitHub site that has some cool training and, and other resources out there. All right, 
so Q and A time. Let's see, there's one question in. Do we have an equivalent clogger network security admin guide for AWS? So Calvin's asking. Depending on what we're looking for, Calvin. So we have a couple of different solutions for AWS. We have we support um, Gateway Load Balancer. So there's a, a Gateway Load Balancer admin guide. I'm trying to think how best to to share that out. So Calvin, if you don't mind, what I'm gonna probably do, probably better use of our time is to, I'm actually gonna send you an email. I think through I think we have your contact info. I'll send you an email with um, links to those admin guys. But yes, we do. Bottom line, there's a there's a few different options depending on your use case. So there's gateway load balancer integrations. There is um, the standard cluster. There's a cross AZ cluster. There's all kinds of stuff. So. Long answer to a short question is yes, we do, and I'll give that to you. John, well, before we drop, do you have anything to add or want to any anything that I missed or, or anything obvious that I should have said? I'm sure um, there was. No, no, you did a great job. Thanks, thanks, Jeff. Um, you know, the, the one one thing I do want want to you know quick as a quick summary um, is, is that you know once. This session is specifically for enabling threat prevention, uh, and I think you know our, my recommendation is that you know follow follow the content that Jeff has created for uh, how to onboard Cloud Guard Network Security into Azure Virtual WAN. Uh, once you have the security gateway up and running, um, and, and then you can uh, and then we can once you finish testing traffic through it, right? So you know point A to point B that's going through uh, the, the checkpoints. The, I would suggest, right, the first step is to jump into the threat prevention, um, use the autonomous threat prevention feature that Jeff mentioned uh, in this presentation. Um, and he'll be, and you have, and you have a, uh, a security gateway that is uh, fully configured for you, right? It's, I mean, all it is is a one click, right? And then you push a security policy and all the advanced threat prevention features are in best practices, right? So you are, so your environment is fully protected from a threat prevention perspective. Um, and next step, I will recommend take a look at the access control presentation from Jeff uh, from an earlier session. Um, is how to define your security policy, how to optimize the uh, your access control policy um, to cater for the um, the uh, you know our cater for the some of the dynamic changes that may happen in your cloud environment, so that you know you don't have to go in and um, and. Uh, do change control on a daily basis whenever there's a new asset that is com coming online. So, so the recommendation is, you know, get the Cloud Guard uh, gateway install, right? Follow the instructions, uh, the, the, the videos from Jeff in our admin guide, get it, get it installed into virtual WAN. Once you have it installed, next step is enable the threat prevention capability. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Jeff has a, a great demo here, um, how to enable it and uh, have some of the advanced features that you can leverage. And lastly, uh, start start you know working on the access control bits. Uh, so so yeah, that's, those are the only thing I want to add. And and lastly, uh, in terms of SIM, right? We what well, we fully support the um, Microsoft Sentinel. So from the management station, we can feed all the checkpoint logs into uh, Sentinel if you are uh, using a Sentinel as a as a SIM. Yeah, good call, John. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, one more and, and one more yeah. before before we let you go. Yeah, go ahead, John. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was about to wrap it up. Go ahead. Back to you, John. Uh, real yeah. quick, so Jonathan Rusky has one more poll for you before you jump, before we all jump. Jonathan, take it away. Yes, yeah, so thank you. Okay, so the last poll, just uh, an interesting one, which we like to do after all of our webinars. Uh, and it goes like this. Um, how can we follow up with you after this webinar? So, of course, only answer if there's something that we can get in touch with you uh, about so we can help with something or... You know, answer your questions or anything like that. Uh, number one, schedule a personalized demo of Cloud Guard Network Security for Azure Virtual One. Actually, if you answer that you want a personalized demo of Cloud Guard Network Security for anything else, Azure, normal Azure, AWS, VMware, Cisco ACI, uh, Huawei Cloud, Tencent Cloud, Oracle, uh, IBM, what have you. If you want any a normal Cloud Guard Network Security demo as well, please uh, vote on that one and we'll contact you for that. Answer two, ask my Checkpoint account team to contact me. Um, 
we'll reach out to you and uh, and make sure that you uh, get everything that you need. Answer number three, please set up a deep dive customized workshop around CloudGuard for best practices for secure migration. This is something that we found is very um, popular in the last uh, few months. A cloud security architect will contact you or somebody else will contact you to understand what your needs are. And we will build a personalized workshop for you, two hours, four hours, full day, lunch and learn, what have you, either virtual or uh, uh, on site. Uh, where we can do a cloud assessment and and uh, work through all of your uh, questions and issues and uh, and build uh, help you to build uh, your ideal solution. Um, answer number four: Help me to deploy Cloud Guard via the Azure Marketplace. So whether that be virtual one or anything else, we can help you with that. And answer number five: the open-ended one, something else not included above. So we'll reach out to you if there's anything else that we can contact you about. Um, and so far, we have some answers. Uh, some people want a personalized demo of Cloud Guard Network Security, either for Azure Virtual One or for anything else. Um, but please feel free to contact us. Um, I think, um, Jeff, let's, let's just quickly jump back to the first slide. I'm going to put that up on your screen uh, so you can see our emails if you want to reach out to us. Um, Jeff and John for the technical stuff. Uh, I mean, John also knows a lot about uh, Microsoft and Azure, but not just network security. Um, and uh, me, if there's anything I can help you with webinars or any other content that I can help with. Um, so please feel free to contact us. And then I'm leaving the questionnaire open in case anyone wants to uh, ask us to reach out to them. And otherwise, from my perspective, all of the four polls are done. And I have to say, this is a personal record. The first time I've done four polls in a webinar. <laughs> Great job, Jonathan. Thank you. All right, so that is pretty much it. We'll leave this screen up for a little bit longer, and then we will let you all go. Appreciate your time. Hopefully this will help. Hopefully this was helpful. And John Goyle, Jonathan, appreciate your help as always. Thank you, guys. And thank you, everybody, for joining. Um, we couldn't do these things without you. Uh, we're happy to get your feedback as to what content you'd like to see in the future. And, of course... You know, our webinars, our under the hood sessions and everything else would not be interesting if nobody would be joining. So the more people that join, the better, the closer we can get to what your needs are, the better it is for us as well. So Jeff and John, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. All right. Take care. Bye, guys.